In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new features that came out as part of Power BI's March 2025 update, including things like annotations for embedded visuals in PowerPoint, style presets for your visuals, and some new customization updates for cards and your other visuals. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the Copilot updates because there's quite a few of them. The first one is the ability to open your Power BI reports with the Copilot summary when you're linking your reports as a team message. Basically, it's another option that you get, which when you click it, will open up Power BI reports like you normally would expect. The only difference is that it will also open up the Copilot window along with the text summary of the report. When writing DAX using Copilot, it can now reference hierarchies and folders within the DAX query view. It means that if you have items organized in folders or in hierarchies, you can reference them as you normally would in your prompts and Copilot will just recognize them accordingly. There are a few improvements to the LLM and how Copilot understands context to your questions. The Power BI team has provided a few examples here. So this one shows how Copilot understands the context based on synonyms without needing to set it up in the QA. This one, for example, understands the term exports, which is related to suppliers. Or here, where Copilot identifies Anna without needing more prompts since there's only one Anna in the model. Ad hoc calculations for the Copilot pane is now supported. This means that if you ask questions, which are calculation questions that require measures to be generated on the fly, previously Copilot couldn't do this, but now it can. They showed some examples here of how it could look like. You can even check the underlying DAX code, which is handy if you wanted to verify how it arrived to that answer. You can now add annotations to the visuals that you embed from Power BI into your PowerPoint slides. This lets you add annotations by right-clicking on any data point, which gives you the ability to add even more contextual information to these visuals. Since visuals embedded from Power BI tend to be dynamic, when it's filtered out or the data point with the annotation disappears, the annotation also disappears. So just bear that in mind if you're using annotations. This feature is currently in preview, so it has its limitations. So for example, it can only work with single embedded visuals. So if you embed the page, you won't be able to add annotations. It also only works on native visuals and only native visuals on the Cartesian type charts. This means visuals like bar charts, line charts, and scatter charts should work fine with annotations. This means that annotations won't work if you want to add them on other native charts like pie charts, maps, or cards. But it would have been nice to see this working on more out of the box visuals that are frequently used. You can now copy report object names from Power BI Desktop or Service. Report object names are basically your visual's unique ID when you look at the code under the hood within the PBIR file of your report. These IDs are usually just a bunch of strings, so they're not really that descriptive if you're looking for a specific visual using just the file. With this new update though, you can enable this copying report object name from the report settings, which allows you to right click on a visual to copy its object name. You can also enable this feature from the Power BI service. This makes it easier to find specific objects in your file, which is handy if you're debugging or troubleshooting performance. When you're creating visual calculations, any columns that you reference in your calculations now gets highlighted, similar to Excel. This makes it easier to visually see which columns you're referencing when you're adding your visual calculation. If you don't like this functionality though, you can toggle this from the right hand side, which will just toggle the highlighting. Reference lines have also been updated. You can now add shade areas on all line types. These are basically the background colors. You can also choose if they're in front or behind your visuals, which I believe existed before, but not on all types of these reference lines. It's also handy if you want the reference lines to be there, but not really in front of your data points. Y axis reference lines are now supported on combo charts. So these are the combinations of bar and line charts. They've also added some enhancements on the new card visual. Now you can choose between tabular or card style layouts, which basically just defines how your cards are organized. If you use small multiples with the new card visual, you can choose the position of the headers 
on the cards themselves and you can also rotate them to save space which I think is a really cool idea. You can also apply conditional formatting on your card elements which I believe before you can only do in certain areas and only in individual cards. You can now copy individual values from the table view. This is a very small update but I think it's quite necessary. Before you had to copy the whole table or row even if you just needed a single value in a single cell but now you can just copy that single value. One that I'm personally excited about are the style presets for your visuals. These are basically predefined formatting options that you can set up using themes so that you can have different options to format your visuals. Unfortunately, at the moment, you have to set these presets up yourself in the JSON theme files. So if you don't know how to do it, it can be quite daunting. However, the potential to this can be such a time saver, especially if you have formatted presets that you can always use. Imagine a card visual with a couple different presets that you can switch between using this feature without needing to manually customize each and every one of them. I'll play around with this feature a little bit and let me know in the comment section box below if you want me to cover this in one of my future videos. Semantic model version history will now include support for pro workspaces. This feature in the Power BI service stores up to five versions of your semantic model, similar to the Office Experience or SharePoint if you've ever used the version history there. This basically allows you to restore to a previous version if the latest update that you made contains any issues, which is a great feature that allows users to quickly recover from critical mistakes. It is a preview feature at the moment and has a lot of limitations. So I suggest using caution when you're trying out this feature for now, especially in its early days. There are some new features that you can use when you're editing your semantic models in the service. The best practice analyzer basically checks best practice rules across your semantic model, which is a great tool if you're looking to standardize your models. Memory analyzer gives stats about your semantic model items, which is good if you're trying to optimize your model performance. And access to community notebooks, which lets you explore or submit notebooks uh, within the Power BI community. I think these are great tools, especially the best practice analyzer, which I'll definitely check out. It would have been good though for this to be available in the Power BI desktop experience instead of just the online version, as this is where most people author their reports. There's a new update on the new organization app experience in the Power BI service. A few months ago, they announced that multiple organization apps can now be made within the same workspace, which gives you endless ways to package and distribute your dashboards. With this new experience though, the navigation for pages within your reports becomes a separate pane on the side. But now it looks like they'll add the ability to combine these two panes into one navigational panel, which is probably the same type of navigational experience that you're familiar with from the old experience. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was included in this month's update, only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to learn more about everything else that they released this month, I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.